This is the Living Wisdom Show, and I'm Patty Paul. Today, my guest once again is my friend Dale Carley. Dale, welcome. And Dale is going to be channeling our friend, a wise being by the name of Barada. So, Dale, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and start your channeling process. The credits will roll, and when they're finished, why, Barada will be with us. It looks like Barada is here. All right, it is Barata. Welcome back, yes. Barata. We've done a number of shows, and it's just great to have you back. It is a delight to be here with you. <laughs> and today, the topic du jour, as best I could describe it, multi-level healing. All right. <laughs> as we experienced recently, um, I, you gave me what Dale describes as body work, but yeah. it was so much more than that. <laughs> and so I'd like you, it w I felt like a different person, but I couldn't even find the words to describe how I felt. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to let you talk about multi-level healing and whatever comes t to mind in that right. regard. Yes, there's so much to say. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. All right. First of all, yes, there's a foundation that is laid, yes, in terms of creating the space in which that healing will occur, yes. There's a, a sort of a foundation in the sense of making that moment sacred, <laughs> that time with you and with us, yes, there, as you are lying there on the table, yes. And then, yes, a time of, of working a bit with your etheric field, yes, that field of energy that surrounds you, that is a part of who you are, but is not contained within your body, yes? And so as we connect with you, yes, we're sort of working in that way. We're connecting with the essence of you, yes? And we're bringing that sense of honoring, that sense of making that time sacred, so that you can feel that sense of honoring and sacredness about the process for yourself, all right? And so that helps you to come into a place where you are more open to healing, yes? Because, yes, healing is a two-way street, yes? It is something that takes two to do, yes? It's, yes, the healer, if you will, yes, comes and helps to create the space and invites the healing energy to be there. But, yes, you're a part of that process, mm -hmm. yes, indeed. And so that's where the foundation is laid, and then so much more happens after that, yes. All right, and then, following that, yes, a gentle touch, as we have, yes, uh, had you face down there on the table okay. there, a gentle touch upon the back, yes, right behind the heart, yes, to notify, yes, all the cells of the body that, all right, something's about to happen here, yes. And as we talked to you at the time, we work to create a pool of resonance, yes, a vibrational cocoon, if you will, yes, that contains a very high, loving, healing type of energy that we create with our intention, that we create with our energy, and that we surround you with, yes. And, yes, the hands that touch act as a portal for that energy, yes, sort of providing it to the cells, yes, providing it to the cells. And yes, as we say, yes, we talk to the cells one by one. And no, we don't sort of sift through them and say, all right, there's one, we're going to talk to it, and there's <laughs> another. No, but we talk to them as if they're all individuals, yes, which they are. They're unique, each one of them, yes. And they each have their own path that they're following, yes, in the course of their lifetime, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And you were doing that silently with yes, them. Yes, indeed, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And so, yes, we talk to them energetically, ah. yes? We talk to them and we listen as well, energetically, when we're doing this, yes, indeed. And so as we begin to bring the news that this pool of resonance is being created, that this beautiful love and this healing energy is being surrounded, yes? It is being cocooned around you. As we bring that to the cells, they start spreading the news amongst themselves. Yes, <laughs> they do communicate, you see. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> All right, and so there's a sense of a sort of a spreading as we touch, yes, bringing this resonance, this high resonance of love that is beautifully intimate in a very spiritual way, beautifully intimate in that sense of 
we're really going to love a lot right now, yes? We're really going to bring this wonderful, beautiful, loving energy to you right now. And the cells respond to this. They get excited, in fact. And they start communicating. The buzz starts <laughs> to spread, yes? Absolutely. And so, as we begin to work and we begin to move on the body, the cells begin to anticipate. Yes? The body begins to anticipate the movement. It begins to anticipate the movement and the approach as we touch here and there. Yes, indeed. And so, yes, there's a gradual shifting that the body participates in. Yes, indeed. And, yes, the cells are invited then to take part in this wonderful vibration that is occurring around the body. They're invited to allow themselves to be touched and embraced by that energy, to allow themselves to awaken to it, and yes, to allow themselves to be shifted in their own vibration, yes, one by one, like a chain reaction. <laughs> yes, indeed. And it's so wonderful to experience that from our point of view. Yes, because we are witness, yes, as well as participant, but witness to something that is magical and wonderful. Yes. Well, to be on the receiving of end of that was very <laughs> magical, too. Oh, yeah. Now, I understand that there might be viewers who yes. have never heard of any of this sort of thing and oh, whose right. idea of healing means going to the doctor and getting a medical mm -hmm. prescription. So maybe you, unless you have more to talk about mm -hmm. in this regard, maybe you could mm, address who we humans are yes. and <laughs> perhaps even talk about yourself a bit. Right. I'll, let, I'll just throw those out there on the table and Absolutely. see what feels right. Yes, indeed. It's important to know who the participants are, isn't it? I yes, think so. Yes, indeed. All right, then. Yes, well, we'll talk about ourselves just a bit first. We are a multidimensional consciousness. Yes, we call ourselves a rata. Yes, indeed. And we say multidimensional, meaning, yes, we're aware of the multiple dimensions of ourselves all at once, and therefore we say we in re reference to ourselves rather than I. Yes, I just doesn't make sense, you see. But yes. When we look at you, then, we experience a multidimensional being as well. Yes, you or anyone else that is physical. It is simply that only one dimension of your consciousness is present within the body, functioning in physical reality. You have so many more dimensions that you are not consciously aware of because that would make you crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that would drive you crazy, absolutely. And so, yes, you have a an unconscious mind and you have a subconscious mind and you have a higher conscious mind and these are all dimensions of you mm -hmm. yes indeed and so we see a multi-dimensional consciousness as well but we understand from your point of view the eye of the singular makes more sense yes indeed and so yes in the multi-dimensionality of which you are composed yes there is a capacity for a full spectrum of experience that includes, yes, the limitation of disease and discomfort and struggle and strife and pain, mm -hmm. as well as the possibility of joy and happiness and healing and reaching for more of what is love. Yes, indeed. All of these and so much more in between are part of the consciousness experience and therefore part of your human experience as you are consciousness in your essence. And a part of you is inhabiting a physical body. All right, and so when you engage in a healing experience of the kind of which we speak or of any other kind, yes, including going to the doctor, your focus is upon healing. And so whether you are conscious of it or not, you are engaging a part of yourself Mm -hmm. That is perhaps beyond what you are normally involved with, yes? That part of yourself may indeed be a very loving part of you, a higher conscious part of you, for example, an unconscious, a subconscious part, yes? And all of these parts participate in the healing. 
making it more easy, more difficult, or somewhere in between, depending upon, for example, the beliefs that you hold in your subconscious about what is possible in healing. Yes, that limit or set the boundaries for the amount of healing that you can allow. All right? The beliefs in the subconscious about what is possible as well as what's going to happen to you. Yes, you hold beliefs about that too, what you're willing to expect. Yes, and it's been documented those who have various diseases, their healing process is dependent very much upon what they are willing to expect, what they are willing to allow as a possibility. All right. And so, yes, the human being has the capacity to heal themselves through working with beliefs, through having an intention of healing, through working with those structures in life that you believe can work for you. Yes. That creates chances of healing. Yes. And when you become more conscious of what you hold inside that would stand between you and healing, the beliefs, the attitudes, the thought patterns. Yes, when you hold those things and you discover what they are, then change them if they are limiting or expand them if they are not. Then you increase the possibility and the depth of healing that can occur. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. And so when we engage a person in the healing process, what we are doing is we are inviting you to become aware of that expanded sense of self, yes? To become aware of the healing capacity that you have and to allow it to come in, to allow it to work with you, yes? To allow your higher self, for example, to work with you, to allow your subconscious mind to become more in alignment with the healing that you truly wish to experience, yes? And so, yes, we invite you to come into that kind of a space with us. And that is part, yes indeed, that is part of that healing pool of resonance that we help to create around you when you're on the table. You see? It was yeah. such a wonderful experience. And I remember you at one point did speak out loud and said something like, you were inviting this, my cells to come and join the party. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Because there was this wonderful, beautiful feeling in that cocoon, all right? This wonderful feeling of safety and peace and love, a feeling of hope, a feeling of positive expectation, a feeling of new possibility, a feeling of light, yes, a feeling of divinity, yes, your divinity. All of that was there and more. And yes, we were inviting the cells to join the party as if to come into the jacuzzi of love. <laughs> yes, as if to come in and let themselves be immersed by that resonance, to let themselves soak it in. Absolutely. And they did. <laughs> yes, and they did, as we experienced with you. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's... it's uh, as you mentioned, a great example of how people can take more responsibility for their own health and healing no, by indeed. opening up to these new possibilities. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yes, the key there is to look at what you're willing to allow as a possibility. And we would say to you, there is no absolute requirement upon what you must allow, all right? Your way of healing, yes, your path of healing is going to be a matter of what is most elegant for you. What is, in other words, the easiest way to get there, the maximum result for the least amount of effort, yes? Mm -hmm. Where you can allow yourself the healing within your beliefs or by stretching your beliefs just a bit, mm -hmm. all right? And we don't say, we're the one answer, for everyone? No. We don't say that. We say, look at your beliefs. Are you happy with them? Are you happy with the boundaries that they create, and they do create them, that they create around your life? And if not, 
be willing to consider the possibility of changing them. How do you do that? In meditation, working with your subconscious, asking for help from your higher self. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. To change what you can expect, to change what you're willing to allow, and then to reach for the healing that you truly want. Yes, indeed. Uh, just uh, speaking for myself, I, it was easier for me to hold beliefs about the mm, self-healing yes. and also receiving healing through the m methods like yours no, right. because I was raised with those beliefs. No. I had a grandmother <laughs> from Germany who never went to m medical doctors, only homeopathic, and she lived to be 104. <laughs> I had a mother who was terrified of doctors and medicine, and she could have done it a bit more elegantly, but she avoided them and lived to be 103 nevertheless. Mm -hmm. So what I'm getting at is, for me, the seeds were planted. Yes. Yes. And with what I've learned over the last 21 years about uh, becoming more empowered, becoming more of who I really am, it has been an easy pr transition for me to take more responsibility for my own health and healing. But I do understand that probably for the most people in the consensus, it wouldn't be appropriate for them to just automatically turn their back on their normal Absolutely not. methods of finding help and healing. Yes, because you can find the help wherever you can allow it in. And if it is from the wonderful surgeon in the wonderful hospital downtown, yes, the one that you have found that you can trust, the one that you found has that wonderful sense of integrity and wonderful sense of devotion to your personal healing, yes, then absolutely work with him, yes or her, work with that person, absolutely. If it is through a homeopath whom you feel drawn to, and you have within your array of beliefs that that is possible for you. Yes, absolutely, to work with them, yes. If it is to work with someone such as us or similar, yes, to work with someone who is in the, the body work arts, for example, yes, then to work with them, to get a sense of the person you're working with, absolutely, absolutely. And if you feel, yes, this feels right, listen to that, listen to that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's empowering yes. too for the yes, person indeed. to take that responsibility to find yes. just the other that feels right for them and using their discernment. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely, because things happen beyond the mechanics. When you have this wonderful sense of a connection with someone, where it, it may not be a personal connection, but around that issue of the healing, this feels right to me. I can sense this person, I can feel that this mm -hmm. person is the right one for me, all right? When you have that, things happen in the energy between you as well. There's a, a union of vision, there's a coming together, a synergy of what you are working towards that makes the eventuality much more likely that you will create what you want, that you will create the healing you reach for. Some years ago, um, I had a, a procedure that, that I wanted to have done, so it required a surgeon. So I opened myself to my higher self. I asked them to help me find just the right one with whom I would have a rapport. And it led me to this wonderful surgeon. And just as an example, uh, on the day before, of the procedure, mm -hmm. this wonderful man said that what he always does is he takes a moment before he goes into the operating room to do his, um, uh, well, he didn't call it spiritual work, but it was something he wanted to do. So he asked if I would mind. I said, of course not. Mm -hmm. So he held my hand and he said a prayer. And that was appropriate for mm -hmm. him. And while he did that, I'm lying down on the table and I'm saying my own mm -hmm. 
metaphysical uh, work. And mm -hmm. so that's just an example of how we can connect with just mm -hmm. the right healer. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed, absolutely. Yes, the terminology is not so significant, is it? Where he's you're saying a prayer of his particular focus, yes, and you are saying a, a meditation of your particular focus, mm -hmm. and together it brings the essence of who you are together with the essence of who he is, yes? It is the commonality that is expressing itself there, yes? And it is an alignment, an alignment of vision. Yes. About your healing. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. All so, right. I, you know, getting back to the way we can even open up to seeing ourselves as, well, shall we say little sparks of consciousness? How would you describe ourselves? Absolutely. Uh, well, you might say that as you are your own universe unto itself that has this vast range of experience of past, present, and future, of processes that you've gone through, evolutions that you've gone through in this life and, yes, in others, well, we would say, yes, on a microscopic level, quite literally, your cells are universes unto themselves indeed as well. All right? Yes, they are consciousness. They are consciousness seeking to become more. They are parts of you, yes, just like you are part of all that exists that is seeking to become more. Yes, and so the cells, yes, the cells have their own form of consciousness their own form. Yes, it's rudimentary, absolutely. But it is composed of the same essence that you are. It's composed of the same love that you are composed of, born of the same all that is, God and Goddess, all that is, that you are. And so, yes, those cells, they have an, an innate nature of loving. Yes. And when they are separate from love, through many times attitudes and beliefs that you hold through emotions that you do not let go of, thus shutting down systems of the body or slowing them down. Mm -hmm. When you are separate from love, the cells in that particular area of the body at least are separate from the love that they need, separate from the energy, the life force that keeps them growing and changing in a positive way. When that happens, they begin to shut down. They begin to hold toxins. They begin to hold energy that is not positive, that is life-threatening sometimes, yes? And so, yes, so much of healing is bringing unabashed love that is focused specifically on releasing that which separates from love. That is so important, such yeah. valuable information. This is one of my pet subjects. I just wish more people could open up to these possibilities. Oh, right. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is happening gradually, absolutely. People are feeling inside of themselves, there's more. There's more that I do not know yet. Mm -hmm. All right. There's more beyond just the mechanics. There's more to life than the mechanics. The mechanics are important, absolutely. But there's more to it than the mechanics. And so, yes, reaching beyond that and reaching for that sense of the, the realness that is beyond that, mm -hmm. the understandings and the feelings and the intuitions and the experiences. And it's yes. as though our mind, which would be our conscious mind, subconscious, unconscious and the other levels yes. have impact on our physical body. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And most directly, yes, your conscious mind has impact, all right, because that's where the seat of power is. Oh. You see, that's where the seat of power is. That's where you're making choices constantly, every moment of your day. Well, that's good to yes. keep in mind. I just got uh, uh, signal that we have right. about a minute left. Right. Um, I'm going to mention that 
my book, A New Spirituality mm -hmm. Beyond Religion, mentions quite a few, few of the things that, that we've talked about today. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out to the viewer. And we'll be doing another show on this very same subject in a little while, and so we'll expand this huge topic a bit more. Uh, in the meantime, I want to thank you so much you are so for very being welcome. here and sharing your wisdom mm -hmm. once yes. again, Barada. Mm -hmm. For anyone who has tuned in late, this is the Living Wisdom Show. I'm Patty Paul. My guest today is a channel being by the name of Barada, channeled by the human being sitting in this chair, Dale Carley. So I want to thank the viewers for their attention. Thanks, my, thanks to my guests. And to my viewers, say goodbye until the next time.